I don't know if you know this, but Microsoft PowerPoint has a built-in presentation coach. <laughs> as, a, as a guy who owns a business that actually coaches people how to deliver presentations that change their life, I don't know how I feel about this exactly, especially because it's actually pretty good. In fact, it's really good. However, there is one bit of advice that it gives you that I think you need to ignore. And that's what this video is about. Stick around. Hey, welcome to Lead Loud. My name is Richard Mulholland. I'm the founder and chief evangelist of Presentation Powerhouse Missing Link. And every week on this channel, we try and answer questions for you that you have around presentation, public speaking, and things like that. And there's one question that sheesh, I don't know how many, whoa, absolutely nobody has ever asked me. And that is, is PowerPoint's presentation coach any good? The reason that I want to address it is because actually I don't think that enough people know about it to have questions about it, but it's actually a really great tool. So what it is, is a, a report that it will give you that when you've got your presentation up and running, you can go view and you can go uh, uh, presenter, or re rehearse with the presenter a coach, and then you can do your presentation and it kind of monitors as you go and then give you real time feedback and stuff. It's pretty cool. But what I was reminded of my frustration with it was because my mate Nick the other day sent me a video and it's of this guy who's a bit of a TikTok influencer and he was talking about presentation coach and he had this to say Microsoft has created presenter coach to help as you speak coach gives on-screen guidance about pacing inclusive language use of profanity filler words and whether you're reading the slide texts and that's the problem I have is that one last bit of advice that one last little thing he said it'll tell you to stop reading your slides and I think well hold on a second that doesn't make perfect sense to me. Let me give you an example. Let's jump into PowerPoint quickly and I'll, I'll, I'll set the coach up. Okay, so here we are. I want to start rehearsing in uh, PowerPoint with the uh, presenter coach. So let's chat a little bit today about SDT. <laughs> Never before has the placement of two consonants been more important. Now, SDT was or is referred to as self-determination theory. And it was a principle that we, we understand today because of two researchers, Ryan and Decky. And I want to take you through what they had to say about this because it gives us some important insights. Let's have a look at this. If we think of entrusting employees with greater autonomy as the encouragement of self-determination, we can expect a great no. We can expect a greater degree of satisfaction, fulfillment, engagement at work because the outcomes are likely to be perceived as the result of their own inherent ability. Similarly, it will serve as an intrinsic motivator to perform better. So what does this mean? Well, blah, blah, blah. And then I get on to the next slide. Okay, so you see what happened there? I needed to deliver that information to you. I wanted to give that content to you. I wanted you to understand what they said. And the bottom line is, is that if I didn't want you to know it, I wouldn't have put it on my slide. I don't understand the advice they're giving. And look, a lot of the advice is great. Let's go through it quickly. So you can see, good job. It's got my paces correct. It's given me my words per minute. It did actually tell me I used the word great a bit too much, which I agree with. And it's great to know what your filler words are and things. And then we went on and I had the second part of the report. And this is the bit that obviously bothered me. Try to avoid simply reading the slide. Here are the slides you might want to work on. No, I disagree with you, and I'll tell you why in a second. Incidentally, one other great thing, underrated thing it t tells me, is it tells me how inclusive my language is. And that is fantastic. We all need to hear that a little bit more. It lets you realize, oh, I say things that aren't inclusive. This is a key feature that not enough people are talking about. So why do I care about this? And why does Microsoft not want you to read your slides? Well, that's because we've all been to these presentations where people put up slides like this and then they take you through them and they go in detail. But the problem is, what else does it want you to do? If the content is there, yes, you should be listening to the person. The problem isn't that the person is reading the slide. The problem is that there is too much on the slide to read. If I put words on a screen, right? They're there because I want you to read them. So if I put these words on the screen now, but I don't stop speaking, then I'm busy saying one thing and you're saying, you know, reading something else, it wouldn't make any sense. If I instead turn around and said, okay, so there's a line from the same presentation I want to draw your attention, attention to, and it's this. We fall in love with a solution when what we really need is to rekindle our love for the problem. And actually, I want you to do it so I will read the slide with you 
get you to understand the core idea. And then I will start speaking again. You can't keep reading because there's nothing else there. Now I've sucked you in. And I think what PowerPoint is doing is it's thinking about its old solution and it's not looking at the real problem. They are a cure for the wrong disease. The problem is not that people are reading their slides. The problem is the amount of copy they're putting on their slides in the first place, which by the way, Microsoft promotes by allowing you to build these docu decks with all your information. I think at the beginning when you're creating a presentation, it should ask you, what is the purpose of this presentation? And if you say keynote, it shouldn't let you put in that much text. If you say report back, then maybe it could, but it needs to understand the context. Here's the point of this video. When you're building your next presentation, don't ask yourself, should I or shouldn't I read this slide? You always need to read the copy and the slides you put up because they are going to anyway and you do not want to compete with your own presentation deck. This is a cooperative game, not a competitive one. The question to ask yourself is, is this content that I want to be reading out to people? This isn't your speaker notes. That's a different thing. Let that land for yourself. Give yourself that framing, but always, always read your slides. Till next time, lead loud.